Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today we're going to learn about unit rates. But before we can learn about unit rates, we have to learn what a rate is. Well, a rate is a ratio of two quantities having different kinds of units. An example of this would be something like, you can type 60 characters in two minutes. Characters and minutes are different types of units. It's, a ratio is a comparison of just two of the same quantities, like boys to boys or boys versus girls. They're both people. Characters to minutes are different kinds of units. Now, a unit rate takes a rate the next step. A unit rate is when a rate is simplified so that the denominator, the bottom part of the fraction, or in this case, the rate, is... One. When you think unit rate, think one. And if we take that 60 characters in two minutes and try to make this into a unit rate, our denominator needs to be one minute. Well, ask yourself, how can I get from two minutes to one minute? Well, you can divide by two. But as when we simplify fractions, if you divide the bottom by 2, you also have to divide the top by 2. So this gets us 30 characters in one minute, and that's a unit rate. Let's continue. Express each rate as a unit rate. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. $10 for eight cans of soup. Well... Start with $10 over 8 cans. We need our bottom to be 1 can. So again, we'll divide the bottom by 8 and the top by 8. And 10 divided by 8 is $1.25 for 1 can. That's a unit rate. Then we have 187 miles in seven days. Again, to make this a unit rate, we need to get the denominator to be 1. The way we can do that is divide by 7 on the bottom and divide by 7 on top. 187 divided by 7 is 26.7 miles in the one day. Units are really important here. Don't just say 125 over 1 or 26.7 over 1. Use the units. And since a rate is a ratio, and a ratio compares to quantities, just leaving your answer as 125 or 26.7 is not good unless you used $1.25 per can or 26.7 miles per day. You need to have the units or you need to write it as a ratio. Continue. Now what can we actually do with unit rates? It's one thing to be able to simplify these things down to one, but there's actually a real life application with these. A 12 ounce bottle of cleaner costs $4.50. A 16 ounce bottle of cleaner costs $6.56, which costs less per ounce. Explain. Well, our first step is going to be to find the unit rate of the two different stores here, or the two different cleaners. Put the money on top, $4.50. I don't want to get my bottom number to be money. I want my bottom number to be the actual ounces, so 12 ounces. We want this to be one ounce. We want to compare one ounce to one ounce, what each costs for one ounce ounce. And the other one would be set up $6.56 times 
over 16 ounces. Now the 12 ounce bottle, if we divide by 12 on top and bottom, $4.50 divided by 12 is 38 cents for the one ounce. If we get the 16 ounce bottle, we can divide by 16 on top and bottom, and $6.56 divided by 16 is 41 cents per ounce. So which is the cheaper price per one ounce is the first bottle. So, compare the rates. The 12 ounce bottle costs 38 cents per ounce and is the better buy, at least in price per ounce. Let's continue. A snail moved five feet in two hours. At this rate, how many feet will the snail move in five hours? Well, we can use unit rates to solve problems like this as well. Our first step here is going to be to find the unit rate. So if we're going five feet in two hours, how far is this in one hour? Well, divide by two on top and bottom, and five divided by two is two and a half feet per hour. So we're going to multiply this unit rate of two and a half feet per one hour by five to find the number of feet the snail will move in five hours. So we have two and a half feet in one hour, and if we multiply that by five on top and bottom, the resulting answer would be 12 and a half feet in the five hours. So the answer, how many feet will the snail move in five hours? 12 and a half feet. So be sure with unit rates to use your units, feet, hours, miles, gallon. Your goal is to get the bottom part, the denominator of the rate to be 1 by dividing by that on top and bottom. And you can do several different things with it. Good luck.